a Defender as a daily driver. Is it a good idea? I'm glad you asked. And who am I? What do I know? Well, this is our second Defender. We've driven it for a long time. We've also had a 90 before this for a long time. And we were guardians of a 110 Puma 2015 for about four years. We've driven them side by side. I thought, let me tell you what happened to me, to us, and our experiences, and if it is or not a good idea. The answer is yes. Short answer, there you go. Let's move on. I've actually done a video like that already. Maybe I should rename it, which kind of discusses most of the things you can expect from a Defender, why it's different to a normal car. Land Cruiser, Land Rover. Some people might own a Land Cruiser looking at this thinking, what are you doing running this piece of rust, reliable, unreliable problems? I tell you, if you drive a Land Cruiser, happy for you, man, great stuff. But what you're driving is an appliance, it's a toaster. And when you take your toaster and you put a piece of, a slice of bread in it, push it on, and after a few minutes, the toast comes out and you have your breakfast. A Land Rover is also a toaster, but it's not the same toaster. This is the toaster that has a very wiggly little button on it, which you have to get just right to click it in, and then you have to watch it. And by the way, only one side works. So you take the toaster out halfway, turn it around, put it back in, wiggle it on again, and then stay there and watch it, because it won't pop up again and you'll burn your toast. This takes a lot more time and effort, right? But that toast tastes so much better. Uh, the Defender has been my dream car since I was like this little, you know, I grew up in South Africa and it's the car that is iconic in the landscape and I've always wanted one of these and it's still my favorite car. I really don't like modern cars, they're just so same old, same old, same old and they're just so, you know, boring. Whereas this one is just, oh no, so I'm a Defender girl. There it is, man. Now you know, this is the official result of our little poll here. <laughs> I want to be able to drive this for the rest of my life. So I know we're going to have an issue when it comes to with all the fuel and stuff, and maybe, you know, we'll end up being able to put an electric engine or something into this car. But I love this car. This is my daily driver, my, my choice for, for the rest of my life, I hope. <laughs> if you think about the army, They've still got a whole lot of them kicking about a farmyard. It's the go-to vehicle. It is a tractor, right? It's probably lying in a barn somewhere with a bale of hay in the back and a couple of chickens on the front seat, but it's running, it's doing its job every day. Utility companies. Have you ever thought about the Alps and how those power lines get over those mountains? As far as I remember, they have a helicopter which picks up the cable and drags it across the valley and deposits it on the other side, which is probably one of the most dangerous jobs on the planet but somebody has to be there to catch the cable when it drops and that guy has to get there in his landing. Forestry. Guys have to go out, saw down trees or check the nature, all of that. These are mountain goats, man. They will get there. A lie to that around here, we have a lot of forests, is the fire brigade, the fire department. They have huge unimogs, water trucks. We have a lot of bushfires here. The guys accompanying them need to get there as well and their preferred vehicle is also the Land Rover. You have tow trucks. Have you seen them on the road? If you've broken down, possibly in your landy. There's a couple of these guys running around here which are sewage trucks, which is really weird. They've got this big tank on the back and a pump. It looks really cool, but I don't know about the job they do. It has to be done, right? This camp, I don't have to explain it. It's one of those expedition vehicles, which is another daily driver. People go really far out into the wild using their landy. Have you been on a safari in South Africa? You probably end up on a game viewing vehicle, which is a landy. You've got this bush guide sitting on the front here. You're probably the first guy to get attacked by the lion, so you're glad he's there, right? And then you have the other side, commonly known as Chelsea tractors. <laughs> Might have heard of them. These are tuned vehicles. They cost a lot of money. They're in the league with G-Wagons. There are, I don't know, Twisted is out there, Nain, Neen Overland, Urban Automotive, the clue's in the name. These vehicles are daily drivers, right? A friend also told us that they, they can drive any, any, any car, but they love driving their Defender because 
there's a really cool road that they can come down from from you know uh, from the hills nearby to come down into the village so they choose their Land Rover as a daily driver just because it can go on roads that other cars can't go on so that's also a great reason to have a Defender as a daily driver and that's where the other side is there are two camps one lives on the high street in London mm -hmm. these cars are polished every single day yeah. and there's that's your answer true. every single day yeah and the other one is down here in the rough stuff yeah. and country man country <laughs> and you can use it every day yeah so to answer your question, it is a lottery. Yeah. Disclaimer here, yeah. results may vary, man. Yeah. So what I have to say is go out there, enjoy it. Yeah. Electrics are coming, we know that. Yeah. You, and you just better enjoy this while it's still here. So what are the practicalities? What's the practical side of driving a Defender every single day? By the way, we've had a Defender as our only driver for the past decade at least we've had this one for about seven years it's been very reliable because that's the top of everybody's list it's let us down once in Croatia and a couple of other things a new radiator and a couple of bushes because bushes is the other thing because these things get used fairly hard they're more roughly treated than other cars possibly practicalities um, old TDIs are a bit smoky on startup so you need to be aware of when you start your car. Is anyone standing behind me? Do they need a mouthful of exhaust or what? So you're kind of very aware of your surroundings in that respect. It's not as pokey as you might need. If you're considering overtaking someone on a little two lane road, you kind of think twice. And a lie to that is your driving style. You're more relaxed. You're not in a hurry. You're not pushing it around anywhere. Although, I'll let you in on a secret, you can hustle quite well in one of these, which is surprising to other road users, but that's between us. There's no comfort inside. Uh, the heater works on or off. There is no adjustment. Works quite well in winter, which is nice. We've had our other one, our 90, which didn't have any heating at all, which is a, quite a bonus. So it's the small things you really appreciate. If you're considering a longer version, a 110 or a 130, it has the turning circle of an oil tanker, man. Be aware of that. If you need to park somewhere tight, watch out where you're turning, all of that. It's not as wide as you think it is. It's quite a narrow vehicle in comparison to other utes, pickups. There's a huge community. Everybody out there's waving at you and you don't even know them. They're all on your side. If you need something done, get on a forum. You get an answer immediately. There is not one single issue that you could have that hasn't been already done. And people are really open and happy and willing to help you out, to solve your problems. I'm jumping in here as well. <laughs> because what I find amazing about this whole Defender experience is that I end up waving at Defenders when I'm not even in a Defender. <laughs> I'm in any other car and I go, <laughs> people are going, who is this crazy person? It's not all doom and gloom. I know your mate told you, specifically Davey, and there are other people out there, that it's a money pit, it, it smokes, it leaks oil, all of that stuff. And yes, you will have that. But on the other side, you'll get to know your car very well. You will have issues in the beginning. You'll sort them out, and then you'll have some trouble free motoring. We don't have any problems. We don't have really any issues. We use this every day. By the way, this is our only car. It's not a second car. Muddy Boots was our only car, not a second car. So you gotta have faith in the vehicle itself. It might break down. And what does that mean? Not much. Because parts are freely available. They're not obsolete by a long way. And they're cheap. Parts are really cheap. You have two kinds of parts, OEM and the blue box. And you're gonna have to choose what you're gonna invest in. And if you take the blue box, expect it to maybe give up sooner than it should. But beyond that? For me, it shares our life philosophy, which is I don't buy into this whole uh, flawless beauty. For, for, for me, what I love about the Landy is there is beauty in its flaws. And we all love that. We love that about the Landys. You know, I mean, if it has a dent, it's not a dent, it's a scar. And we wear that with pride. <laughs> So, the 200 TDI, there's one electric part in here, which is the fuel solenoid, uh, cut-off solenoid. Beyond that, the only electrics are the lights. 
which is really comforting, really easy to fix. TD5 is another story. There are some computers in there. That's a very complicated engine, very tunable, but you might have issues with an electronics box and if you need to replace those, those are very expensive and going up as well. Having said that, my mate Rob, he has a 90. You can see that over here, that is a TD5. It was tuned a long time ago. It makes about 170 horsepower and you think that's going to be heavy on the engine. It's on 400,000 kilometers, which is more than this one. Well, we've got about 360 on here now. Think about that. They are reliable if you look after them. Pumas, you can't fix anything. It's just a mass of plastic under there and it's very complicated, obviously. It comes from the Transit and also the Ranger has the 2.2. We've been custodians over 2015 yeah. for about 100,000 kilometers zero defects very and comfortable to drive that one was pretty comfortable it had enough torque yeah. it had leather it seats pokey. Yeah. and it was quite quiet on the highway actually which is quite good and it had a usb can you believe that <laughs> so you can play your tunes not very good sound but it was there we did what anybody would do we took our perfectly serviceable station wagon and traded it in for a 90 and then we took it to croatia trophy if you don't know what that is, check it out here. It's probably the toughest, most grueling off-road challenge in Europe, laying it out there. The thing came back and we put it through its paces. It was, the front wings were both dented in. They had a hole in the door. It was parked in a meter of water on its side. And that's where the issue started. Not only did we put Nissan Patrol GR axles under there, yeah, I know, I know. You know why we did that? It was cheap, 200 bucks. 200 bucks, you get two axles plus a rear locker. And instead of this, you get half shafts this big, man. So we used that to go through Croatia. I can tell you now, don't go there. Don't even think about it. Keep it standard, man. That's what we learned out of it. But we were naive, we were young, we were excited. Let's go. If you enjoy, if you enjoy mechanics, uh, this is the best part. There's no electronics on it. There's nothing. Yeah. I'm the, really grateful that you've learned more, more than me. Yeah. I tried, but it's, it's, yeah. it's very greasy. So I know there are guys out there who have got more experience and they've been through the mill. And there are also guys who know nothing yet and they really want this question answered. So it's up to you guys down below to carry on this discussion. Yeah. Share your um, experiences. Some are good. Some are horror stories. I'm aware of that. Yeah. But hey, Daily in the driver, end, will you do it or not? In the end, you can't go back, right? Yeah. <laughs> so guys, thanks for watching, man. Hope you enjoyed this one. I hope it was an interesting little question. Um, keep rolling. No, I can't say that it's your thing. You have to say it. Thanks for watching, guys. Till the next one. Keep rolling. I love that. <laughs>